Hello and welcome inside the scores table. Brian Hench and Josh Abel, Danny Ray and Courtney Dilks here with you. I almost forgot the name of the show. I swear to God. It's <laughs> been a while. I looked at the screen. I forgot the name of the show and I was really scared when there were two other strangers joining Danny and I today. <laughs> it's, I think welcome it's back, been, guys. Good to see a full yeah. Hollywood square. It's been a it's been a month I think since we've seen each other. Um, we have limited time with Courtney, so I'm going to jump right in. We're going to revisit Miss Basketball. Chloe Spreen won it. We're going to talk a little bit 2025 Miss Basketball Hall of Fame pair, classic pairings are out, and then um, some way too early rankings to tide people over through the off season when we're doing some other types of shows and not necessarily talking uh, current events. So we're going to go ahead and roll the clip, and we'll be back in a second. Got <laughs> Something that you worked really hard for and you deserve. I know a lot of Miss Basketballs, no more deserving than you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> So that was Chloe Spreen being awarded 2024 Miss Basketball presented by the Indiana Fever last week. Um, really cool moment. The girls, the screen there is kind of weird because it was also the middle of a class day and we were standing in the middle of the school building. So they kind of had to like temper the yells just a little bit, but just a really cool celebration. Um, and then Chloe's reaction too when she came downstairs, because I mean, we weren't, we weren't, I wasn't joking around when I said that race was too close to call up until I got to look at the ballots. I mean, it was it was neck and neck. Chloe had no idea that it was coming. Her coach, Jeff Allen, was pretty surprised, you know, pleasantly surprised when I told him that she'd won. Um, so, yeah, just genuine surprise, relief, all the emotions that go into there, just so deserving. Um, Danny, you had a chance to talk about it a little bit last week, but I'll let you start us off with the discussion because I think of the four of us, um, you probably know Chloe the best having trained with her for as long as you did. I think one thing really neat was the very next day after being awarded Miss Basketball, she was awarded Miss Basketball on Friday at school. Saturday was one of the biggest like club kickoff tournaments up in the central Indiana area. And Chloe came up and uh, put an Alabama sweatshirt on and walked around. And I think the IHSAA and the Indy Star and everybody who kind of gets behind Miss Basketball, I think would be really proud because it was... I mean, it was really cool to kind of see Chloe navigate that building and just people taking pictures with her and tagging her in Instagram posts and, uh, you know, doing TikToks with her. And um, I mean, at times there were just lines and lines of people just trying to trying to get their picture with her. So I think that was really cool. And I think Miss Basketball is always, um, you know, the, the person that always embodies more than just their performance on the floor. And I know Josh and Courtney will get into that. And Courtney's the perfect person to ask, but you know, I told Chloe that, you know, that it just forever changes how she's introduced now in the room. Like when it's, it's, it's never just Chloe Spreen anymore. Now it's Miss Basketball Chloe Spreen. Um, but, you know, and that also eliminates the fact that she won a state championship and, and, you know, her, her scoring records and all of that stuff. So, um, but a really cool kind of 24, 48 hours for her and her family in the Bedford North Lawrence stars community. Um, so again, congratulations to, to Chloe, but, uh, I, I, you know, I also wasn't really surprised with who won third miss basketball in BNL history joins Jory Allen from 2019, a player that Chloe really looked up to, um, growing up Marla Inman from 92. Um, the stars are now tied with Warsaw for the most miss basketball since the award was established in 76. And then just one more step before I toss over to Courtney, um, 1,869 points, 633 rebounds, 259 assists, 200 steals, 62 blocks. That insane sectional tournament run that they kept going this year with the unprecedented title. And then obviously the state championship last year. And um, looking back, um, I'd forgotten just how good she was in that Lawrence North game. And that's one where Jeff Allen was kind of like, that was the moment where it's like, wow, you know, this kid's special. And then what she did at Gamebridge before fouling out. And in the story I talked about, I talked to her about it, just her calm in that moment where even as she's walking to the bench, 
game on the line and one that can still tilt either way. She just had full confidence in her team. They hit the three, win the game. Um, just a, a really special career by her, and, and it was fun seeing her rewarded for that. Um, Courtney, for you, I, I just, I guess, thoughts on the award and, and just, you know, seeing that moment. Yeah, the thoughts that I have uh, when I watch that clip, um, that's a memory right there that is forever going to be ingrained in Chloe's mind. I can remember I mean, 14 years ago, I remember exactly coming down uh, Highway 13 and like there was all the, there were all these people. We were getting home from spring break out there with signs like you don't forget who was there, the people that you saw. And like there'll, be, there'll come a time, you know, where some of the people that were there will no longer like they might pass away, but she's going to forever have that memory is going to be ingrained. So that was such a cool moment for her to have that she'll have forever remember. And, and really in that moment, like reality probably hasn't completely set in of what list uh, that Chloe has joined. And I can remember like, you know, when you become Miss Basketball, you're thinking about the other people that have been before you who are Miss Basketball. So for me, like I remember thinking about and, and surrounding myself with, you know, April McDivitt and Shauna Zolman, Katie Geralds, uh, Sharon Versep, Stephanie White. And like you watch all these people go before you the year before me was Skylar Diggins. And then when your name Miss Basketball, like Danny said, like your name is etched into that sorority of that list of players. And that's those are players that you've looked up to. And so she's going to look at the Sydney Parishes and the Layla Halls and and the list of kind of like that generation, the decade before her. And now it's Chloe Spring and is in that. And she was up, you know, walking around, getting the picture with all those little girls who they're looking, they want to be like Chloe Spring. So you just become, when you're at Miss Basel, you just become a role model. And the doors that open for you because of you being in that role as a Miss Basketball, like you, you can't you can't describe just the, the opportunities that will come just from that. It was really cool circling back to the show that we did afterwards. It was cool seeing Danny's reaction in real time and kind of feeling Chloe cause she's sitting next to me, just like kind of feeling her emotion. And she said she got a little teary eyed seeing Danny there too. And then too, just having Courtney and Chloe there together to kind of, you know, commiserate and reflect together is now two Miss Bass pointers. That was a really neat moment for me personally. And a perk of, of doing the show with, with you two, Josh, you played the game. Are you coached against Chloe? So I think you, you bring a unique perspective from all, all three of us or all four of us. Um, so I'll let you take it over. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've lost a lot of uh, sleep trying to prepare for uh chloe spring she's a phenomenal player i mean if you look at like her her wins like 95 plus wins state champion uh you know look at all the individual records i mean she's going to alabama which is big time sec basketball um like you know there were nights where you're just watching hours and hours and hours of film like trying to figure out like okay how are we going to stop her and i think that was uh you know uh, because she was just so, so tough uh, and just just a winner, class act um, and very deserving. And probably the most important thing is if she comes on the scores table, she gets a cool caption like Courtney and Hank and and uh, she, she's not a loser like Danny and I. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, you can pick your own caption. But, yeah, you're right. <clears throat> she will in future appearances when uh, we book her to replace uh, me or Danny, whoever's run off first. <laughs> Chloe, Chloe will be the one to replace us. Um, uh, let's, let's talk briefly about the other finalists. I apologize for putting you guys on the spot. This just kind of clicked in for me, but we should mention the other finalists because those are of uh, five kids were finalists and the other four too. I mean, they just had phenomenal careers. I wrote Jordan pool from Fort Wayne Snyder. I wrote, and I meant it. And I told her dad or stepdad this, like she was my favorite player to watch. Just, I mean, the things that that kid is able to do with the ball as a passer, is just unbelievable. Reagan Wilson, we've talked about so much. I've had the opportunity to get to really know her over the past few years. Just a phenomenal human and one of those kids whose impact will never be fully quantified or qualified because you have to be around her and kind of see it to appreciate it. Um, Julianne Woodard, I saw her over the summer for the first time and got to follow them a few more times and a, little, a lot closer this year, which was awesome. And, I mean, just that kid does everything. She's such a sweet, per you know, great human being. And that applies to everybody, but her specifically, just such, such a great person. I remember doing that story on Olivia Elmore. And Julianne made it a point, kind of interrupted both of us to just say, hey, call, you know, to, to stump for her kid, for her teammate um, to get recruited, which is a cool moment. And then, two, just her willingness to sacrifice statistics on that team to ensure success and to have the, the regular season that they did, runners up at the Hall of Fame Classic to beat BNL and to finally get that initial monkey out their back is going to do dividends for them moving forward. Um, and then, finally, Faith Wiseman um, going to IU. Um, just, I, I felt like I saw her grow a lot. Like she really grew into kind of being that post player that we wanted to see from her. 
um, in the games that I saw where it's like, okay, here we go, where she was dominating. I mean, the Hall of Fame Classic back-to-back games, Danny, you and I talked about that after it happened, but <clears throat> she almost led him back against Columbia City, and she dominated against Lake Central, and, and it just, they got beat by a, a better team. But just phenomenal seeing Faith's growth, and she's going to do great things in Indiana. And just like I said, like just five awesome kids, and, and you know, Chloe won the ultimate prize, but that doesn't take anything away from the other four or, or anybody, you know. So that's what I got. Yeah, I think – so you look at those five, and I, I mean zero, zero disrespect to Miss Basketball, Chloe Spreen, okay? But if you were to if you were to vote for Miss Basketball, 117, 71, 57, whatever it ended up being, if the definition for what you were voting for was who do you think is the most talented player in 24, it might be different. I mean, and, and you hear some people say – Oh, well, I think this kid is the most talented kid. And, and I'm thinking about Jordan Poole, um, just gobs of talent. Um, it, it go down to Reagan. I, I think if you had framed the, the voting in, if you were to start a high school program and you had one kid for four years, who would you take? There's a lot of people, more than 57, that would select Reagan Wilson first. So, yeah, Chloe's going to wear the one, but you know, Jordan Poole and Reagan Wilson have their own, um, I, I think their own, like, I, I guess, place in, in, in this class. Um, and then Julian Woodard, I mean, Julian Woodard was teammates for a tournament with Jordan Poole, um, really good friends and teammates with Reagan Wilson and Chloe Spreen on the club circuit. Um, this kid's a load, man. I, and so maybe there's not a kid that affects a basketball game singularly more than Julian Woodard. And so, this this class um, has a lot of really good really good pieces to it, and there was some drama to it. I mean, it, there there really was. I think if you talk to ten coaches, you might get you know three, four, five different answers as who they thought Miss Basketball would be. So, um, a shout out to Jordy, uh, shout out to Reagan, shout out to Woodard and Wiseman. Um, we'll all be very anxious to follow, um, you know, ironically saying this on the, really the, the week leading up to the NCAA tournament, but we, we look forward to now everyone just gets to cheer for the Indiana kid. Right. I mean, if you had a horse in the, in the Miss basketball race, now we, now we're all fans, um, of all of these kids as they go on to their collegiate careers and represent our state in the history and the history of the great basketball that's played here. But congratulations, congratulations again, Chloe, because when you talk about Jordy, Reagan, Woodard, and Wiseman on 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 who you're going to wear the one in front of. Um, that's quite the list. And I can't confirm you get you talk to different coaches and different voting members, and you get different answers. And it is Danny. It's like you said. And I, I suppose that's something that's cool with the award. It's also frustrating to an extent. It's just everybody has their own definition for it. I mean, we dedicated an entire episode to how we define it, and I don't know that we came to one concrete answer. Um, but that's what's unique about it, and that's it's what made this year's um, field and final so unique. Looking, oh, Josh, did you want to jump in? No, I was just gonna say, I think, I think, you know, when when all like things are considered, like I, I honestly, like this is this is a very close call. I think for all five of these players, I think probably what it came down to more than anything is just is just winning, and 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 you know that was probably the big the biggest uh, separator there. Um, you know, when 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 you got down to it. Looking ahead now, um, I published a story on the Star. What was it? Whatever today is. It was a couple of days ago. Um, 2025 watch list for Miss Basketball. Looking at it, we've talked about it for a while, just kind of hinted at it. And now it's here. It feels really wide open. Like I think that there's three, three names that are going to be at the forefront for everybody, maybe four going into the season. And that's Jayla Lampley, Maya Makaluski, Meredith Tipner. And then you could probably make an argument too for maybe Kira Reynolds jumping into that group just based off of her numbers. Um, but then beyond that, I mean, there's a ton of other kids that you can make the argument for, be it Addie Boat or Addie uh, Baxter. Addie, Addie Baxter. Baxter at Columbia City or Layla of Durkee at, at Lawrence Central, Avery Gordon, the kid who's going to Purdue out of Brownsburg, Keir Reynolds, I mentioned, Gabby Spink, Gabby and Spink like yeah. Gibson to a state title. And then there's more kids who can enter the discussion as well as I, I just go down my list here. But Addie Bowsman at Twin Lakes, I mean, she was with Olivia Nickerson, but Addie Bowsman has had a phenomenal career and played such an important role. She was their leading scorer this year. Um, Hadley Crozier, if she's able to come back and sneak in there, you know, similar to what we saw with uh, Amber Treader a couple of years at Forest Park. I remember talking to you guys about that. Kenzie Gardner, don't sleep on her either. I mean, you know, a name that maybe not a lot of people are thinking about, but she just got that team to semi-state for the first time. She puts up great numbers against a reasonably tough schedule. 
what if she does it again? Could she be the one that slips in there into that final discussion? And then finally, Vanessa Wimberly, that's probably one of my bigger long shot picks. But if you value success and state tournament success, how can you argue against that body of work and her role in, in getting Lake Central to the point and getting them to the state championship game this year and, and semi-state the year before with that win over South and Washington? So that's where I start the discussion. It's just kind of a big broad list of names. Whoever wants to start, I'll let you uh, – you take command and float out your thoughts and early prognostications for uh, 2025 Miss Basketball. Um, I'll I'll go ahead and start. I, I actually like I'm pr- the one name on that list that you just gave that I'm really excited to see like where her game grows um, is Kira Reynolds. I think she's such a unicorn in the sense like most six foot four girls are front court players. You know, and, and she's someone that her usage rate is off the charts. I mean, like usually the ball is always in your you know, like Gabby Spinks hands or, you know, it's 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 at Addie Baxter's hands or whatever. But like she's different in that sense that the ball is in her hands a lot. Yes, she can get hers and get rebounds and block shots and impact the game. But she also is probably one of the best facilitators uh, as well. And I think. I, I obviously I don't I don't know them personally, but I, I bet you she's going to have a chip on her shoulder going into her senior year, and and I could see her having a monster season. Go yeah, ahead, I just want to shout out to you know all the names that we've mentioned that are on this list um, and come from kind of like the the trainer slash mentality, um, and somebody who's already got you know this award before is like. If you think that you're going to be Miss Basketball last year, I'm talking directly to this list of girls. Like, you better start acting like it. You're in your last your last season of club basketball. I can remember my senior year. Um, I was played for Danny. It was like one of the funnest summers I had when I was playing in those tournaments. Like, I was coming from the feeling of like being Miss Basketball, playing the Big Ten, and like feeling and and really embody that you're Miss Basketball and. Really, the race, I think, is wide open. Uh, there's people that they got to go in, you got to prove. So, like, it's a wide open race. So, what you do starting now in the offseason is so critical of what's going to happen next next year when we're on here talking with that Miss Basketball. So, if you're in that mix, like, you got to embody it. You got to go out. You got to start thinking, feeling, and acting like what – and thinking, asking yourself, like, what what does Miss Basketball do? What is her workouts like? And, and start, like, embody it. Be her. Go get it. The race is wide open, and I can't wait to see who, where's that number one because it could be any of the the, of the list um, that we just talked about. Courtney, what's it like as an athlete, both in your experience and just having you know trained with a lot of kids who were in that consideration? What's it like for them going into this summer? I mean, is it pressure? What's it What's it like on the mental side of things? Oh man, it is. It's one of the best summers, especially a lot of these players are already committed where they're going to college, and you're really like if there's kids on your team that aren't committed yet. You're trying to help them along, you know, set them up and help them to become better players to get looks. But you're really you're coming from the mentality of like, what am I what do I need to add to my game for the the next level? Whether you're playing the ACC, the Big Ten, the SEC, NAI, like wherever it is, you're just constantly evolving as a player and able to put that into the circuit um, and, and play against the best in the country while you're doing it. Uh, yeah, I, one question I have, Courtney, is I, obviously we know that these girls, you know, they, they take their off seasons very seriously. You know, they, there's 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 weights and there's there's, you know, speed development and there's, you know, uh, you know, AU. And obviously, you know, there, a lot of them, are, like you said, are committed and they're thinking about the college level. Um, what's one thing like mentally that you like did from your junior year into your senior year to have that like mindset that your senior year was going to be the best that it could be? I think you have to get really clear on what uh, the vision you have for your senior year is going to be. Like, if you're kind of like, you don't really know, like, I want to be a good player. I want to be in the running. Like, that's not clear. Like, you have to get so clear and you have to, like, say, like, I I look, you know, look at yourself in the mirror. I call it mirror exercise. I used to do this and, like, looking yourself in the eye and saying, like, I am Miss Basketball. Like, there's – that's a statement. And, like, you start saying that and look yourself in the mirror – and there's so many people look themselves in the mirror just to see, like, oh, is my hair okay? Do I have toothpaste on my face or whatever? But, like, if you literally stare into your eyes, there's this whole connection that you can make. 
Josh is I, a big uh, do I have toothpaste on my face guy. I like that. <laughs> also, we should we should shout out Courtney's last question. We didn't get a chance to to do it. Oh, it's so good. Danny and I were raving about it. I texted expletive laden text to them, but that was such a good question. That she asked Chloe. She asked Chloe at the end, um, what she, if she could go back and tell what would she tell her seven year old self, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Seventh grade self. Seventh grade self. Courtney, what would your answer to that question be? Uh, as a third, uh, like, ask me the question, then I'll answer it. So I know where you're going with it. I forget. Like, as my, for, my, for myself, as a 31 year old, if I was Miss Basketball, like my senior year, talking to my seventh grade self. I say it though in the moment, like as a high schooler. How do you think you would have answered that? All right? What heck? What would you go back and tell yourself as a senior? Let's let's push the timeline up because we're yeah. old now, Courtney. Yep. Um, what would you tell your senior? You're going into your senior year. What would you tell yourself then? I would tell myself to focus more on the mental side uh, because I, I know now how important the mental side is. And I was doing things, but like physically weight room, uh, getting the shots up. Like there was one summer in three months I in college, I shot like 40,000, made 40,000 shots and turned all these receipts into coach Versip. Like nobody else knows. This is the first time I ever said it. Like I just saw that in my journal the other night, actually. But I was doing all the things physically, but there were things mentally. And so I would say, and I'm not putting a plug, but like whoever, find a mentor, get a coach, get somebody who's gone where you want to go. If whether it's the WNBA or to be a great player and like ask them questions and don't go about it alone because there's people out there that want to help you. And so um, that's what I would tell myself is like, find somebody to mentor you um, on a deep level and, and really focus on your mindset. Who was that person for you when you were in high school? Uh, when I was in high school, um, I really uh, – April Schilling, I trained with her a lot and was able to see. Um, and I still talk to her to this day. And really, Coach Versip, like, we had a great relationship, and she really poured into me even when I was in high school. We had great conversations, talking on the phone. Um, and I would also say Danny. Like, Danny really helped me when I played for him. And I tell people this all the time. Like, he's one of the greatest coaches on – explaining things but also giving you that belief on who you can become as a player so thanks danny i think i think one i I get i get asked that question a lot like you know what what did courtney and and whoever sid jory i i don't know mclaughlin pick pick your miss basketball i I think you know i'm gonna go back something that josh said that was really smart that he thought that the separating difference in this year's vote was Chloe's resume of winning. And I think what I would tell people is the irony of Miss Basketball is it's an individual award, but you can't accomplish it without team goal, like team accomplishments. And, you know, Chloe, you know, maybe she doesn't win this award without kids like, you know, Carson Norman and Mallory Pride and Madison Bailey and some of these great players that helped her win a state championship. And you look back at, some of the, the, the missed basketballs in the past, you know, Sydney Parrish won, you know, let's go to hers. I mean, she won the state championship her junior year in a very similar way that Chloe did and then graduated. I think it was four division one athletes, like out of the starting five. Um, and so a lot of, uh, Sydney Parrish's Miss Basketball run was a credit to kids like Taya Irvin, who went to Northern Kentucky and, uh, Amaya Hamilton at Duquesne, um, and uh, and kids like that. And so I think I think the team success, I think, is an important deal. Um, and I think in the end, um, you know, when we look at who the 2025 Miss Basketball uses as a transition kind of back to the original question, Jayla Lamp, there's no question. Jayla Lampley is entering next year, I would think, is, and, and I, I actually maybe disagree with the with the rest of the pod a little bit. I think there's a little bit of a gap there. I think Jayla Lampley is probably the kid. I mean, if she, let's say she wins again, okay, the state championship again, that's going to be really tough to beat, guys. Well, then all um, bets are off. Yeah, if we're, play, if we're looking in the future like that. Yeah, so to, to prognosticate that. Now, and that's not to say that Jayla Lampley is the only kid that controls her own destiny. We're going to talk about the Hall of Fame with a potential matchup between Hamilton Southeastern and Lawrence Central. So if, let's say, Makaleski, you know, beats Lampley head to head or, you know, outplays her statistically or, or whatever it is, people will find that as an excuse to say, OK, well, I, you know, I like Makaleski. We saw it in head to head. Does Hamilton Southeastern have to advance further than than Lawrence Central in, in her senior year to get it? I don't know. But uh, but I think what happened this year. Uh, with Chloe winning shows that what happens their junior year matters. Um, another kid is in the same boat as, as what Chloe Spreen went through um, 
is Addie Baxter. Addie Baxter graduated four really, really, really good players in her starting five, and they they carried the number one ranking much through the state and now graduates everybody. So you, let's look at Addie Baxter. You know, Fatty Baxter leads a huge run for Columbia City next year. I think we need to throw her right back into the conversation as mm-hmm. well. Um, but again, I, I think it's an individual award that ironically you cannot accomplish without, without team goals and a group of people around you. So I, I think what I say is, Value winning, go win games. Okay. Just, and if, if you want to be in this basketball, that the stats will take care of themselves and the, the media will take care of it. If you're winning basketball games, but just go out and win games. Good. Up- uh, real, real quick. I know we're going to get like Courtney off, but I think another thing too, that Courtney said was really, 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 really smart is that she wrote everything down. Yeah. Like every shot, you know what I mean? Like every, every probably, you know, in, in the weight room, you know, she's like, hey, you know, we're we're doing a Bryce Drew shooting drill. Uh, my record is 29 makes in two minutes and 30 seconds. Like, I'm going to get 30 today. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like that 1% better. But, like, there, I, I, there was like an old coach. I forget. Someone said, like, if you're not writing it down, then it's it, like, it, it, like it doesn't matter. Or it doesn't count, you know. And I, I think those little things like that, like just kind of stacking those days by writing everything down definitely is is another good piece of advice. Courtney has to bolt. We're, we're taking this. Courtney has to run to, to shuttle her, her kids around. But I wanted to give her a, a proper send off. Thank her for doing this with us. We'll obviously be back. And like I've been saying, we're going to do some off season episodes. But for the purposes of the 2023 24 season, this is it until All Stars, probably. Um, so I wanted to give Courtney a chance to say goodbye. I wanted to say goodbye and to thank Courtney um, for agreeing to do this with three nitwits. Um, it's been such a, a blast having you on with us. And I mean, just your insight's phenomenal. You're so thoughtful and and insightful and just the level of care and like the, you know, the way that you talk about the mental side of the game is just so enlightening and is so important as some, you know, I mean, we all have stories and we all know about how horribly wrong things can go for athletes, especially in this day and age. And I think Courtney, the work that you do is just so important and you've just been such an awesome addition um, to the podcast. And if, if I had to trade the other two for you, I would every time. (laughs) That's not saying much. I know. (laughs) Well, I appreciate that, Hank, and uh, I'll never forget sitting in the car and getting the call from Danny, uh, inviting me to be a part of this podcast, and um, I think we're on the spot. I said, yeah, I come in, and I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but it has far exceeded my expectations, and I want to thank you guys for um, allowing me to be on here, for asking me to be on here. I want to thank all the listeners for um, for listening to the show, and like, this is something special, what's going on for for girls basketball, we see it happening uh, at the NCAA level, the W and the W, but like high school girls basketball in Indiana, we're seeing it happen there too. And it's because of everybody collectively. So um, I'm excited to get back on and talk about the all-stars. Congratulations to all the teams and coaches and seniors who are moving on uh, into their next phase of life in college or whether that's playing basketball or not. And uh, I look forward to, to what next year brings with this podcast. I think that we have a really – the dream team right here, honestly. I think we have a, a great mix here um, that we got. We gel well together. I'm excited to to get back at, after it, uh, even after we do the All Star Show. Keep getting in those reps. You know, you know the the hard time behind the microphone. Uh, set <laughs> structure, set structure, and keep crafting those takes. <laughs> Pronunciation. That's right. Yeah. Pronunciation. You got to have the confidence. If you if you take away one thing in this podcast, let it be. If you're gonna get a name wrong, say it confidently. You sound like a confident moron. <laughs> <laughs> but Courtney, Courtney, thank you so much, and uh, we'll talk again soon. See y'all. Bye, Court. Bye, Courtney. All right, let's get back to ripping. Let's get back to uh, not ripping. Um, I guess ripping. I, let's get back to ripping her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's get back to riffing on what. Dan Hank. Said. So I got a question for Hank. Yeah. Okay. So you wrote. See, I, and I pause there to be like, oh my god, you read my story. Um, I, let's did. talk about Meredith Titner. Okay. <laughs> if she wins Miss Soccer, okay. Yep. She's going to win, I think. Yeah. She, yeah. She's the odds on favorite to win Miss Soccer. Okay. Mm-hmm. That probably helps her, right? In the voting. Like, don't you think people will naturally want to see like Miss Soccer and, and Miss Basketball like go, kind of go to the same person? Or do you think that will hurt her? I, I, oddly hurt her? Or do you think it's just completely indifference and I'm just trying to make something of it. That's a good question. I think, I don't think that it'll hurt her. I think that it could go either way though. And it might vary by voter, but that's a really interesting approach. I didn't, I thought of it from the third option. I'd never really thought of those two together, but as you say it out loud, the opportunity to make history when you pair that with the body of work. So I don't want it to come across like I'm minimizing what tips done. Cause it's incredible. I'll talk For about sure. it in a second, but 
No, that's really interesting. I, I don't know. I, I think maybe it would swing it for some voters, maybe on the fringes, like they see her and they say, oh, she must be a really good athlete. But at the same time, you look at the star power that's also, let's just focus on the top three for now, Maya, Jayla, and Tip. Like you look at the star power of the other two, I don't know that <clears> – <throat> I think if anything, maybe it just helps her just stay in that conversation um, when you're competing against a kid who's going to IU and a kid who's going to go Power 5 and Jayla. What do you make of that, Josh? Well, I'll tell you what, man. Like I, this is just my experience. Like if you're a multi-sport athlete and you play 4A girls basketball, like basketball has to be your number one. Otherwise, you're never going to be a great player. That's just my experience. Tip is a freak of nature. Like, I, I don't understand how someone can be this dominant at two sports and win as much as she does. Like, it's unheard of. Like, like you can be like a like a all state volleyball player and an all state basketball player. Like, that's that's doable. But you can't like win both. Like, she could do it. Like that. That's unheard of. I I don't know if there would be a a greater feat than that. And I'm not from Indiana. I don't know the history uh, 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 of these awards, but I'm just saying, like, I I have never seen an athlete at this high a level do both as as well as she does. Like, she's unbelievable. Heck, it's it seems like it's a big deal to even have a Miss Soccer or a Mister Soccer who also plays basketball because soccer is the same thing. Like, it's just specialization. And what's crazy about Tipner and Danny, Josh, all, all three of us can speak to this. Just, I mean, she came in this way. She came in this good on that Ashton yeah. Shade team. I think she's averaging like nine a game yeah. and a bunch of rebounds too, and she's only gotten better. And that's what's incredible. And when I looked back at like this state tournament run that they were on this year, it kind of felt like there were those Meredith Tipner moments, be it the free throw shooting. Um, I, I got the actual percentages, and I'll get that later. But the improvement at the free throw shooting, her ability to find big shots and just – you know, the way that she adapted her game to fit that team best and still put up the big numbers is, is pretty incredible. And yeah, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Like, like usually, usually if you're, if you're a stud soccer player, that means like you, you're like, okay, well, you're going to rim run and play defense and we're going to carve out a role for you just because you're a great athlete. That's usually how it works in 4A. Like, like, hey, basketball, it's not my main sport. But you're, you're going to be like a like a catch and shoot player, or you're going to be like our rim runner. Like that's common. But to dominate both sports as well as she has at this level is unheard of. I've never seen anything like it. You know who dominated the the soccer pitch was Courtney Delks. Like oh really Courtney really Nurses. she was so good. So there's a so the 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 pat the previous head coach at Michigan State was a woman by the name of Susie Merchant. Her associate head coach is now the head women's basketball coach at Western Michigan. His name is Shane Clipfell. And Shane was in uh, rec- in Sweetser, Indiana at Oak Hill High School recruiting Courtney Moses at the time. So this is 15 years ago. And I, I should have told the story when Courtney was still on the pod, but Shane was leaning up against the fence in the corner where they take corner kicks. And Courtney always took the corners. And she, so there was a corner, she grabbed the ball and she ran right by Shane. She winked at him and she goes, watch this. That's crazy. And she stuck it in the back of the net like Beckham. <laughs> I love Courtney. And Shane, so Shane calls me and he was like, dude, he goes, I just saw the most unbelievable thing on the soccer pitch. And I'm like, what? And he tells me that that's the story he tells me. And I'm like, holy smokes, man, that's awesome. So kids like Courtney <clears throat> and kids like Tipner. Man, those kids are, I mean, I, I just, I don't even know how to like, I, that's just a totally different air, regardless of what happens next year. Meredith Titmer will graduate is one of the greatest winners, I yeah. think. And I don't think she needs the one Jersey to validate it, but I think it's just an interesting thing um, to see. And I think we'll, I think we'll also need to track where Meredith goes to college. Cause I do think that people do not since 2012. And when Jessica Rupright won, which is again, like 13, 14 years ago, Jessica Rupright was going to Miami of Ohio. Not all of them finished high major or power five. I think we called it then, but every Miss basketball since Jessica Rupright in 2012 has first verbally committed to a high major school. And, um, and so right now, I mean, Meredith does have some high major opportunity. We'll see if she chooses one of them. 
Um, but I think that would be something to watch too. Well, and you also got to remember, guys, they're playing the number one strength of schedule every single yeah. year. We're not talking like a two A, three A. Like yeah. We're talking the number one strength of schedule, toughest conference, toughest sectional. And well, and without it, without know. Reagan Wilson and Ava Shoemaker on the roster too, she's going to score seven hundred points next year. Yeah, no doubt. It's like you said, Danny. It's like that team success element. Gets yeah. into that point, you know, and I mean, body work. She has the state championship overtime game against Fishers when she went off her, her sophomore year, and then last year's semi state run. And with what she did at semi state, where she was sick, I mean, that entire week, Reagan was bound bronchitis, too. I mean, it's, it's pretty remarkable what they did. Um, the one, one, more, one, one closing thought on this, there, one too. One more question on this topic. One more one, question. One closing thought on, on the 25 Miss Basketball. Oh, I um, Layla Durkeeb not making course six, um, which, which again, we, we're going to debate that. And, and, and I think a lot of people, well, maybe we're not on, on this episode or whatever, but I, I think yeah. a lot of people, that was one of the first things said was, you know, how can you not have a Durkeeb on there or whatever? But interestingly, I don't believe Miss Basketball has, has come off the course, has come off the course six, excuse me, has come off the course six every year since I can remember. I think every single one of them has been a core six. It kid. has come off the core six. So but. has come off of course. I, I just butchered that sentence. No, I, I need the off season, Hank. I need the off season to start working on <laughs> subjects and predicates. You need the apparently. off season. <laughs> but, um, but interestingly now is Jayla Lampley has emerged, I think as the central piece of that team of the Lawrence central team, which, which I called, you know, kind of at the end of the year, um, really a chance to punctuate their high school run as, as kind of the next Ben Davis. Um, and so I, again, I think that's one, I think one aspect of this too, because now there's not an Amaya Reynolds, Rashonda Jones kind of deal where you're asking yourself, okay, are they going to split the vote? And I know Amaya ended up getting hurt and, and spider ended up grabbing a lot of those votes, but um, you know, maybe 365 days later when, when we're talking about who Miss basketball is, if it is in fact, Jayla Lampley, It'll be interesting to see how many votes of Durkee gets. And That's what's. Oh, sorry, I was going to follow no, up. No, no, no. Go, go ahead and take take that ball. I mean, I so when it I, enough. When I put that list together, I kind of I was debating where do I put Layla, just because I mean she was so integral to that state championship run, and like that's the I, Jayla's a phenomenal talent, an incredible player, and I agree with you. I think she's probably the favorite going in. I don't know how big of a gap it is between her and the field. That's something it that parks out closer to the season when it, when it's these conversations are more relevant, you know, for now it's just kind of fun banter. But when I think of that state tournament, I think of some of those moments that Layla Jerky had that got the team over the hump. Jayla got in there. Layla pushed him over the hump. So how do you reconcile that as a voter and figure out your vote? That's going to be a really interesting conversation. And I mean, above all else, I wrote about the kid. I talked about her a lot. I mean, it, I'm just so happy to see her healthy. You know, I mean, all, it's always a thing with kids, right? But her, especially where, Knee injury, knee injury, just bad luck, bad luck. And we were talking before the season, Danny, about how is she going to be because she's so recovered from the last one. She came back phenomenally. Excellent season. And just, I mean, she made the most of her first state tournament run, which is really cool. Again, for a kid, um, if you missed the story during the regular season, like Josh probably did, um, kid who did not like basketball growing up, didn't really like sports at all growing up, for her to have found this sport and to be performing at the level she is to get an opportunity – you know, I'm sure it's just a matter of time before she gets that full ride scholarship to a big time university um, is, is really cool. And it's awesome to see your hard work and dedication um, paid off there. Josh yeah, um, well, was where you were going to go with Miss basketball, Maya Makaluski, because that's the last one we need to talk. It was. Uh, what does Maya got to do? I mean, if you think about it, like the numbers are there, like, like she, she's, she is to me, she's the toughest guard in the state. Like if, if you put someone that's equal or smaller than her, she's just gonna bully him. If if you if you if you put someone that's really really tall, she's just gonna go around. Like she can come off screens, she can score every which way. She's got all the records, regular season, unbelievable. I know the easy answer is well, they gotta win. Okay, yeah, we know that. But I mean, like, what's like? I guess what's it gonna take? Is it a state championship? Is it uh, you know at least you got to get to the the, cha the state championship game? Like you got to get out of sectionals? Like like what's it going to take? I guess is my question. I think, and this is interesting. I think that part of it will hinge on what the sectionals look like because if it's the same sectional like that we all know and love, sectional maybe regional might be enough. Danny, your thoughts? I think she's got to have a deep run. 
How and do- I would tell her that. I, I think I would tell her that if, if she asked me, what do I, what do you think I need to do? I think it has to be a deep run. And um, because I think at the end, if you're just going to sit there and, and just compare resumes, I think in the end, I think, I, I think Jayla's got one and, and Abdur keeps got one. And I think that's going to be a really difficult thing to overcome Gabby for anybody, Spink, yeah, regardless Spink's of the numbers. Kira hey, Reynolds, 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 Reynolds got has one, right? She was a freshman. Yeah, Kira Reynolds has one. Yeah. That's right. That year too, so she's got yeah, one. I think I think she needs a deep run. Does she need to win the whole thing? <sighs> how deep, by the way? Like, how are you? How do you define deep? Like, I define deep as under the current format is maybe semi-state, maybe even semi like state semis. Like, how I do you define deep? Have, I I I I would. I, th- I think I think it's got to be Gamebridge. I, I don't think it has to be Gamebridge. I think I think if 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 what I think hap- is going to happen happens, okay, which I think Lawrence Central is going to have another super deep run. Um, I, I think you have to frame what I'm saying with in in comparison to what else is going on in the state. You know, like if 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 let's say let's say Lawrence Central gets tripped up in sectionals which i don't think is going to happen okay well, let's just say they do That's not okay though, then that, that that puts the yeah. that puts relativity to how deep that run needs needs to be mm-hmm. um but again in the end i think people will say well even though they tripped up in sectionals Sydney Parrish lost in sectionals the year that she won Miss Basketball coming off of the state championship year and so and so it, it's not going to certainly disqualify Jayla Lampley if she does it but I think that's the one glaring omission on the resume. Listen, I, I know Jayla and I know Maya and, and I know Tipner. I know all of these kids. Okay. M- Maya, no- Maya knows she's got to have a deep run. Like, and she's entering this off season with the idea of being ready for college and being ready to be a part of a deep run on uh, a Hamilton Southeastern basketball team. So they will be singular focus, singularly focused on that um, for sure. Well, before before we uh, get to the the state de- uh, or a deep uh, run in the in the state tournament, uh, she's going to have her opportunity at the Hall of Fame Classic 2025 in the biz. They call that a segue. Yeah, um, no, that's great. I wasn't ready to move on, but Josh is. So oh, okay, cool. yeah, we're moving on. <laughs> no, we're just on. let me let me get in a word edgewise real quick. Oh, okay, okay. Gordon. I don't I, want Hank. I, I was I thought I was like doing. Something. I thought you, I, Josh. You I thought it. you nailed it, man. You nailed it, Josh. You just you just you jumped the gun a little bit because you know I get I get the phone calls, Josh. You don't. Get okay, yeah, calls. you're right. You're right about that. Um, I'll start, Josh just, Sable. Yeah, uh, yeah. No. Man, I, quickly, I was right. I had that segue. You, I was, I was right. you nailed it beautifully, and I apologize for just <laughs> passing all over it. It's my fault. Okay. Danny mentioned Addie Baxter. She's going to work out. Avery Gordon's the highest ranked player in that class. Avery, like, what happens if Brownsburg goes on a deep run? Brownsburg's going to have to go through Lawrence Central. That's right. So yeah. we head to head. Well, That's geez, I mean, fun. they got Plainfield and Avon also. Like, it's not, they, they may not even make it out of sectional. But if like, they do, though, I mean, that's going to be tough. You get the right draw, though, and getting out of that section is going to look good. And by right draw, I mean going through Avon and going through Plainfield, mm-hmm. having to take down the big dogs to get there. Like, that's the thing that always vaults those sectional eight kids, especially the ones who win, like Tipner up my book, is just because you're beating the best teams over and over and over, you know. Um, so that's interesting. Gabby Spink, too. I mean, Josh, you know her well. That's going to be an interesting yeah. state championship. I mean, she, um, she, might get, she might get two championships. I mean, I know that obviously a lot has to – you know, go Gibson Southern's way, but I mean, she might get a get a second. I think Gibson's up in four now. I think. Oh, aren't they? really? Okay. Semi state runner up in a state final gets you there. Well, I mean, no, I mean, I think the relevance of going up to four is if they win it again, and she has oh, a three yeah. and a four. Sure. And, sure. and you graduated Chloe Graham, like, and yeah. so. Yeah, it's a that's, that's right. Gabby's an interesting one. I saw yep. Gabby this weekend too, man. That kid, she was I just to go back to it. That kid, man, the shot making in the state championship too. So yeah. getting to the state championship and doing what Chloe did in the state championship are two different things. Like Chloe had a game high twenty two in that game and was awesome. You mentioned I forgot that she fouled out, but but Gabby did have that moment. Yeah, the, the, the moment that you you would and I. And I think Jayla did. I think Jayla Lampley did too. I mean, when in that big run, when they when they went red H um, on the offensive side, she was that. I mean, dude, she was bombing threes, like bombing. They were deep, like, and they were true. So, um, but yeah, the Gabby Spink is a very very interesting name to watch. 
she's she's got some talent coming back around her. The other names we've listed off there. I mean, they, and and Maya does too. Jayla does. Well, I guess I just asked all over my own point, but never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Segwaying to oh okay. Yeah, no, yeah, you go ahead, Josh. You segue away. <laughs> Making the best all over something. Hank just did that to me. <laughs> well, I like what what we were what I was saying earlier, trying to be trying to be smart. Um, you know, we're not gonna have to wait for a LC HSC uh matchup uh at the state championship. Like we might get it at the Hall of Fame classic. And you know, like you said, if you're building resumes. Uh, there's no better way than to show out at this uh, tournament. We got four great teams: Homestead, Lawrence Central, HSC, South Knox. Those are four of the state's best, and uh, you know there's no better way, like I said, than to uh, than to uh, you know show up in in, in Newcastle and in and, and kind of show what you got at this tournament. It's uh, it's pretty big. Well, two year two years ago when Noblesville played Bedford North Lawrence in the Hall of Fame championship game. So good. Noblesville won. That was the uh, Reagan Wilson game winner where she uh, dove into the corner right in front of Hank. And uh, Titmer had a good game that game, but that was kind of her. I think that was the moment when Reagan Wilson became a true, legit Miss Basketball candidate. Um, but if you go back to that, Noblesville being the champ on the game winner by Reagan Wilson, the MVP was actually given to Chloe Spreen on the losing team. With a little kind of interesting tidbit. So we, we all came out of that. There was no podcast for us to really kind of share our thoughts, but just, you know, in the car on the way home, people were saying, well, what does that do for Miss Basketball now? Chloe won MVP, but Reagan's team won and Reagan had the, the game winner. So um, I did think it kind of separated those two, but Josh, I think you bring up a good point. I think a lot of people will use that as a separator when deciding their votes as to what happens in that basketball game as to who their vote's going to be for the one. Yeah, I mean, in the, well, the morning game is is Homestead uh, Lawrence Central, right? Yeah. And the second game is HSC South Knox. Oh my God, that, those games are going to be so good. Yeah, by the way, good. like the crowd that South Knox is oh going to bring. Is, oh my God, like I was and just a level of coaching and and the talent. Uh, I mean, you could not have four better teams. Bob versus Makaluski or Holman or Stidham. Take your pick of any of those three versus Bob. Am I pronouncing your name right, Danny? Or, or Josh. I have always pronounced it Bob and have never been. I mean, and that's in like casual conversation. I've never been corrected. So okay. I've always pronounced it Bob. Ella, Ella's phenomenal talent going back to South Knox. We talked, I mean, we talked the night of just the crowd that they had there is unbelievable. And then my apps at home said, getting the chance to see her. And I mean, any of those games coming out of it, like this feels like that, uh, that tournament when Reagan had the buzzer beater against um, BNL, because it was BNL, Noblesville, Mishawaka, Marion. And then I can't remember who the fourth team was, um, but the field that year was kind of similar. Last year's field felt <clears throat> like we were rolling the dice a little bit potentially, but turned out to be phenomenal. Um, so next year going in, I think that we're going to have four exceptional games. I can't, I can't wait for that one. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, what else do we got to get to? We way oh. too early rankings. I think was the last thing. Yeah. See, Josh, I should have let you handle the transition. See, listen, I'm on, I'm on. I'm on. I tripped all over myself. You're in. You're in. Like you know volleyball regular season mode <laughs> you're ready to go baby I'm ready um hey before we get to that what's your do you guys have a favorite moment from this past season i, I meant to ask question. you this via text but do you have Ooh. like a favorite or most memorable moment during the season like a game moment or anything like that i mean aside from doing the pod obviously aside from chloe in that moment that we talked about at the top of the show um, for you guys, maybe it's something that we come back and revisit here after we talk about the way too early rankings. But, but I think I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that for real. I w- reserving the right to change my mind. Okay. I think the splash that Columbia city made early in the year, I think was, was really great because it, it was, it just kind of showed how much we don't know about Indiana girls, high school basketball. We're getting ready to talk about the way too early rankings. And if I did the way too early rankings two years ago, leading into last year, I would have eventually gotten to Columbia city, but I probably would have said it next is Columbia city. And then just moved on to the next team. They were really good. And I think Addie Baxter was a kid that I really enjoyed watching this season. Um, Always known her on the club circuit always um, had mad respect for her game. And then I I think in the first episode ever that we did, 
I told a story about how Austin Parkinson, her future college coach, was talking about how she was the most complete point guard that he, he he's seen at the high school level in Indiana in years, I think was a, a, parafa- a paraphrased quote. Um, but Columbia City was a really cool story this year. And that's just I, I, I choose that one because it was for me unexpected. Um, yep. I expected that from McAlesky <clears throat> and I expected the deep run from Tipner and Wilson. And I expected the dominance from Lauren central. I expected spring to win miss basketball. I expected all of those things to happen. Um, but Columbia city and I would maybe even throw center Grove in there too. Like these surprising teams that really kind of splashed onto the scene. Um, I think the, 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 the headline for that, I think is Columbia city. So that would probably be, um, I don't know that, that my favorite moment, but one maybe that caught me off guard and humbled me a little bit in talking about this sport. I think for me, the thing that stands out is just how much of an impact this 2027 group had. Yeah. That's a really I mean, if you one. think about all the teams that made runs this year, you know, like McCutcheon, you know, uh, Plainfield, like, you know, like just just the impact that these freshmen had. And I think, you know, back in in, in Danny, in my day, because we're, obviously we're a lot older than than you, Hank, like, Freshmen had to wait. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like maybe like you play JV, you know, uh, you, you, and then your sophomore year you break through or, 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 you know, like there's, there's a little bit of a, uh, you know, uh, kind of like a, like a, like a progression, you know, type thing. Like the, a lot of these freshmen this year these, for 2027, like they, they came in and made it, they made an impact uh, day one and their programs did things that they've never done in the history of their, of, of, of their school. And I think, uh, you know, it was such a, such a dynamic group. I think the journal courier, I think is the local publication that covers that Lafayette area. I think they named a player of the year. They named Lily Graves. And I think it was the first time in that publication's history that the player of the year has ever been given to a, to a true freshman. That's, yeah. that's a big deal for real. Yeah. yeah and then like deal. Plainfield, like Plainfield, you know, I think that was their first regional championship in four a, and a Menser, um, Menser, you know, and then obviously, you know, we, we talked about Franklin Central a little bit uh, off air before this show. I mean, there's just so many. Kenzie Cook, Kenzie Cook too. I like of all the post games, like if you look at the views and the ones that got the most reaction, <laughs> yeah. the yeah. one Hancock, that we maybe. did with Eastern Hancock versus LaPel after that yeah. game got a ton of noise. Um, and so, yeah, Kenzie Cook Kenzie splashed Cook, on. Yeah. Really cool. I mean, really, really cool. I actually, admittedly, um, found myself kind of thinking about that a little bit um, as I was watching some of the club basketball this weekend. I was, you know, I, I actually found myself sitting on a couple of 28 games and I was like, I wonder who out here is going to really make an impact, like yeah. a true impact. Like, who are we going to talk about? And, you know, I was like, oh, I like that. Whose name is Hank going to butcher next year? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Danny's gonna start bringing up like really difficult names in the text thread. Tell me to talk about them. No, so but no. Listen, you bring up a that's, that's a, let's stay there for a second. Like sure. when I first when like Lampley's were in junior high, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I mean this, I just tell this as a part of the story for Layla Durkee. But like people would say, like Lampley, Lampley, and the third one. They would literally call really? her the third one. Yeah. And now she's not. Now she's mm-hmm. Layla Durkee. And it's and she, so she stepped out into her own. How many times has Kenzie Cook been called Kenzie Koch? And it wasn't just Hank in, in this podcast that called her Kenzie Koch. Like no, no one no. with any sort of education would pronounce that Cook. Um, but, you know, people like the people know these kids now. But so I was thinking about it with 28. Um, there's way, way, way too early to start mentioning the, the names that I, I think are going to make impacts. But um, there's some good ones. There's yeah. some good 28s, man. How good was Center Grove this year, by the way? Holy crap, Jenny! You mentioned. No, I think that, I, right? I think I, I said this earlier. Like, uh, like they reminded me of those old, like Jay Wright Villanova teams. Mm-hmm. Like, no turnovers, forty percent from three, five girls on the court defending. Like, you know, playing off two feet, making the extra pass. Um, just clean, polished basketball. And Lily Bischoff is going to have a huge summer. I mean, she doesn't, she, I mean, I've known the Bischoff family for years, obviously through the club circuit, but you know, Lily was a kid that, that really played into who she is now. I've probably taken, I mean, she's not even in my club. I've probably taken a dozen calls on Lily Bischoff for, you know, from college coaches that I've just known forever. That kid really splashed um, onto the scene. And when she walked into, there was like a jamboree for club basketball a couple of weeks ago, she walked in in her boot 
she probably wears that boot and doesn't have any idea how relevant that boot was with the outcome of of the storylines for this for this this season. I'm not saying that if she goes down that they're going to go on and beat Lauren Central, but the fact that Lauren Central did beat them and she is in the boot now, people are are talking about that boot. But um, get healthy, Lily. Congratulations on a great year. But yeah, dude, Center Grove was so good, so good, most consistent team I think I saw all year. Just and never anything fancy like. Maya McCluskey and HSC, they just did their thing and shut her down. Not shut her down. I think she still went for 30, but more or less shut her down relatively to what Maya does. Maya, too, was really fun to watch. That sectional championship game, section like Nozzle HSC stands out just because, you know, if HSC would have done it, it would have been cool to see them finally get over the hump and for Maya to have that moment. Yep. On the other side, Noblesville, and knowing the things that they've gone through over the past, you know, year or so, be it the social media stuff, obviously the other drama, we don't need to, to get into all that, but the social media stuff on its own is a lot for children to deal with. I think people lose sight of that a lot is that we're dealing with kids here and not adults. And that doesn't give you right to be shitty. Um, but to see them go through that and overcome that is really cool. Um, Olivia Elmore. I know that I talk about her. I've talked about her a decent amount, but just, I mean, that kid to overcome an injury the first time, come back, find out that the surgery didn't take because somebody, you know, something went horribly wrong um, for her to come back the way she did is just amazing and admirable. And then, just to echo what Josh said, the 2027s are really special. Um, and then how about Olivia Brzei? That's a uh, buzzer beater at the yep. city championship game. That was pretty cool. And, Danny, that show that you and I did the next morning where I think I texted you from Zionsville, not knowing that that game was actually going to be good and go into overtime, I thought that it was just going to be, you know, kind of blasé and then we'd move on. But that was one of the most fun shows that we did um, just because it was just sort of us firing from the hip, figuring out how to go live for the first time, and it went yeah. on. Not pretty much without a hitch, but that was really fun. Um, and that Zionsville no little game too was just incredible. And yeah, Alec, that was Alec, game. Emma Hans an all-star, Andy McGuire's retiring, Alec Caldwell had an awesome year. I think she had an all-star case too. Um, but that was great. I think I touched so what's her. the timeline on that, Josh? So when are we gonna see Bedford hire a coach? When are we gonna see Zionsville hire a coach? When yeah, are we gonna see Hamilton question. Heights? I mean, you got, you got a couple you got a couple legends uh, that you have to replace. So typically the way it works is um, it all it depends on when the school board meetings are because school board meetings are only once a month and they are the ones that have like the final say. So like, let's say that, I don't know, let's just say that BNL has someone right now and it's March 20th, but the school board meeting isn't until like April 5th. Well, there might already be someone that they have. They just haven't named it yet because you have to wait till the school board meeting. So with spring break coming up, and with school board meetings, it, it might not be until middle of April, end of April, it, it, sometimes even beginning of May, because uh, like because like I said, all, all of those things have to have to time uh, have to time up, um, you know, before those announcements are made. Pike and um, Lake Central too, another two favorites in this past year. I've listed out like twenty six to 30, 55 different things in an A to Z that you can read or not read. I don't I don't care, but. I, I just want to shut out as many people as possible. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, that's that's something, too, that we'll have to address at some point in another episode. I don't want to get too bogged down into it. It's just, I mean, the number of coaching jobs that are open. Mm -hmm. um, some look like rebuilding opportunities. Other look like some pieces are there. I mean, it's it's a fascinating landscape, and that's something, too, that's going to color, color a lot of opinions and shape a lot of things going into next year. All right, so way too early um, top – fives i don't know how you guys want to do it just looking ahead to next year i think lauren central is a clear runaway number one and four a i think south and washington is probably a clear runaway number two maybe three there's some intrigue there with hse but then from there for sure i think it's wide open um three a i i like silver creek a lot i think your gonna be really good again um but just let's just start with those two because those are the classes that you guys are also most familiar with and, and let's start with four and how you guys see that stacking up well danny how about you do north side and i'll do south side yeah, sure. I what? look. I on in the north. Uh, yeah, HSC is going to be HSC is going to be really good. It just in kind of the north, kind of Hamilton County area. The team that I'll point out is Carmel. Um, I think Carmel didn't get a lot of sound on this pod. Uh, they return Mackenzie Woods. They they um, return Lauren Perry. Uh, Izzy Shepard's going to be healthy next year, uh, God willing. And so, I mean, they return like. I mean, I think you could say that they were, I think they returned like five division one kids or something like that. And they're in wow. their starting five. 
like Carmel's Carmel has the talent. Okay. Um, they also have a trademark win at home against Noblesville, which was a semi-state finalist uh, in a game where Mackenzie Woods showed me a lot um, with how good she can be. So I think the Greyhounds are the team to watch on the north side. Um, uh, I don't want to call them the best team yet, but I, I think they were – uh, they all year last year, I think they were a year away and next year, um, it'll be their year. So it's going to, they're going to have the opportunity to really step into their own light. I think, um, on the North side, particularly with the graduation of, of kids like Reagan Wilson and Talia Harris, um, and, um, so to, to really kind of step into their own, but they have really good players coming back. Um, I mean, I like Lauren Perry, like we always talk about how Maya Makaluski is a cheat code. Like Lauren Perry has, she's got a college basketball frame, like kind of this like Doug, like Doug McDermott kind of frame, just long, kind of lanky. Um, I don't know the exact statistics, but I think they were like, I think they were I, like, she was pretty close to a 40% three point shooter. Um, and Izzy Shepard, like she, she, she really started to come into her own. Um, having that last name Shepard too, I think, um, you know, I was watching the Carmel. I can't remember who they were playing now. I think they were playing, was it Noblesville again? Maybe Zionsville. She hit three first quarter threes, Izzy Shepard did. And I was like, oh my God, here's another Shepard making threes in a sectional. Like it's, oh my God, it's 2004 again with Jeff. She well, he's older than that, but it's, you know, it's the early 2000s again with Jeff Shepard. Um, you know, you know, making shots. I think he, I think Jeff Shepard actually as the all time 3 PM leader at Huntington where Darby Maggard was the coach. And she was at one point in time, the, the 3 PM leader, but I digress, but they can, they have kids like Mackenzie Woods can get downhill. And if you decide that you want to stay home on Shepard and Perry, like Woods is going to be able to get into the lane and kind of create some stuff. If you decide to come out, she just has to throw strikes, put them on Perry and, and, and Shepard's hands. And if they can put it on the net, they're going to be good. It's Carmel. So, you know, if they, they just have to win getting their, their good youth players to enroll in Carmel high school, if they can get their good players to enroll in Carmel high school and they can develop and get lucky with maybe one of their 28s, that could be a team that could make a lot of noise that didn't make a lot of noise this year. Yeah, I think of the south side for 4A, I mean, I think you're you're going to see a lot of new faces. I mean, I think, you know, if you think about the teams that have really dominated the last four years, you know, the B&Ls, the Center Groves, the Franklins, you know, Jennings County, uh, you know, East Central, uh, you know, I think those schools are going to take a step back. I mean, I think LC and LN are clearly the class of uh the south side i think you got to throw a playing field in there um i think center grove will be back i mean whenever your backcourt is lily bischoff and ava grant like you always got a chance and i know their jv was like 20 and 0 last year so i mean yeah. you know they're, they're gonna lose a lot but they they're, they're still gonna be really really good um you know gibson <clears throat> yeah i think here's here's a team i think greensburg next Greensburg. year could be really tough. They're Leo West fan. You're, you're a Leo West fan. Yeah, they're three A. Yep. I know their head coach Jason Simpson very well. He's a great coach, um, and I think next year, like they could definitely take a step. I know we mentioned South Knox earlier, right? Because we were talking mm -hmm. about um, mm -hmm. South and North are going to be yeah the, the Hall of Fame class. That's I mean, right. Prince, both, Prince teams, and Bober, both, both teams won twenty three games, right? And in 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 their their head to heads were like what, what a possession. You know, um, so um, a lot of I think, yes, you are going to have similar like the, similar faces, right, with with L LN, LC, Center Grove. But I do think you are going to see some turnover as well, because a, a lot of these 2024s, uh, you know, were, were, were big time pieces for these uh, South Side teams. Yeah. Had and, then, and then outside of the, you know, the, the county or the, the mayor in Hamilton okay. County kind of north side, kind of going into that. You guys have mentioned South Bend, Washington. Um, Homestead's going to be really good next year. Homestead's going to be fantastic. They have Maya Epps, who some might argue is going to be one of the most impactful 26s in the Midwest, let alone the state. She had a really good year. She got so much better from her freshman year to her sophomore year. And we actually have said on this podcast more than once that the big jump actually isn't from your freshman year to your sophomore year, to your sophomore year, or your junior year. 
So I fully expect Maya Epps to to really kind of stand out, but they were impressive and they have Rod Parker. But on the other side, like like I saw Ankenbrook this weekend, guys, like they, I talk about Lauren Perry and like Izzy Shepard, like dude, Anken, Whitney Ankenbrook, Homestead, okay. right? Gabby Helsom. I mean, they they return everybody. That, and um, oh gosh, I think they only they only graduate their point guard Emma Royce I think is the only kid they graduate so now you have a team that made a deep run with a with a with a that big three that we always talk about in in Helsom, Ankenbrook and Epps um you have the budding star in Epps made easily one of the 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 candidates for 26 miss basketball with the way 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 too early uh prognostication for that um and then one of the coaches that everybody knows like it's death taxes Rod Parker so um, Homestead's going to be really good. You guys mentioned Washington. Um, and then, um, your girl Hank also, Hank, not to cut you off, but Hank also makes a great point. We still don't know who's going to be four, a three, a, uh, what the sectionals okay. are going to be yeah. like, that's also going to be a huge, huge announcement here coming up soon. Yeah. And I'll talk on that in a second with pro- projections, but Danny, you had one more team you wanted to get to, or one more you wanted to mention. Uh, oh, I was just going to talk about um, who who was the other um, – because we Washtenaw? talked about their starting five so much. Who's going to be in the backcourt with Wimberley next year? The little one that was making the shots against Noblesville? Oh, my God. Kennedy Burks? Yeah, She graduated. Oh, she did. She was a yeah. senior. Lake Central. Lake Central, they'll be interesting. They lose a lot, but <clears throat> we'll, we'll see on them. Um, Warsaw. That's a team yes, that's going under the radar. But Warsaw is – I mean, they get yeah. everybody back. Brooks Hartman. Um, Brooke Winchester's a core all-star this year. She averaged around a double-double, 46% from the field, 37% from three. Um, they're loaded. To Josh's point about reclassification, I mean, the 3A rankings could double as a 4A rankings because you have Silver Creek who's back down. Um, Jennings County and, and Columbia City are right on that line. I looked at the projections, did some math, crunched some numbers. Isn't Ron Colley kind of in there in that too? Ron Colley's, like Ron Colley's yeah. going to drop down. Um, and then you saw Danville has their two bigs coming, their two big players coming back. Bishop Jatard, like you talked about, graduated a little bit, but they're stacked. I mean, Dan Wagner, I mean, we we might not give him enough credit on this show, just how good a job he does coaching. I mean, every year they're there um, and competing. And then in, in 2A2, I mean, North and South Mox, Bishop Lords will be back again. Rensselaer is going to be loaded. Um, Austin Brown, South Central, and then Lanesville is going to jump in there. Who knows what Hadley Crozier, if she's back, how that changes things. Will they go up, you guys think? Yeah. The success factor? success factor has Lanesville up. Um, and then in Class A, Marquette Catholic, friend of the show, um, mm-hmm. uh, Katie Lingdon – or Katie Kligdon. Um, I mean, she has everybody back, too, with Marissa Pleasant. Um, Lanaya Davis is unreal. Board in North Central, Farmersburg, um, Orleans, Morgan Township. And then in 2A, gosh, how can we forget LaPel and Lanaya Willis, Wills, who just was exceptional this year. Yeah. Um, and Eastern Hancock, I mean, Kenzie Cook's going to have a lot of a lot of weight on her shoulders, and they're going to need some other kids to step up because I think they graduate, what, six seniors? Um, but I wouldn't put anything past that kid. She's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, so let me hop back to Warsaw real quick. So sure. Brooke Winchester was a kid who a lot of people asked when she was named as a core six. Tell me about Brooke Winchester. People knew that she was on Warsaw. People knew that she was good. Some people knew that she was going to Ball State, but they maybe didn't know how good she was. We talked about Northridge. Um, Northridge got upset. I think it was, I think it was in the regional. I think they got beat. Yeah. Um, but when we were breaking down the film on that team, that we talked about how that was such a good defensive basketball team. Brooke Winchester put thirty on them. So she put 30 on Doug Springer and Springer knew exactly who she was and put a defensive game plan in. And that was really her kind of core six junior all-star moment um, to kind of come out. And and, and, um, that, that singular game, quite honestly, probably put her on that team. Um, But there's a lot of talent in that kid. Really good. Really good. And I mean, she's one too that you never know could maybe, you know, peek into that conversation for Miss Basketball at the very least, steal some votes and get in the finals conversation. Um. So yeah, I think we covered everything that we wanted to, and we did it in a tidy yeah. one hour and eight minutes too, which is which is a big win for us. Yeah. I'm proud of us. We kept it under two hours. That's progress. That's me being tired. That's us not having anything else to talk about, but we did it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, and I'll, be, I'll I'll start the farewells with this again. This isn't the end of the show. Sorry to people that that probably disappoints, but <laughs> we'll be back. We'll be back. I think we're gonna do an all star show. I think we agreed upon you know you know maybe plot some surprises for that one. 
Um, and we've been talking about it. Now I just need to apply those ideas and formulate a plan. But I, I like the idea of doing some specific topic shows, be it like one of the ideas that I think is really unique is just like, what's it like coaching your daughter? I think that'd be fun. Multiple daughters. Um, Josh, I know that you have a very unique experience with Sophie um, from when she was playing uh, basketball for you growing up. Uh, some fun stories from that. Um, yeah. But I think I think that sort of thing would be fun. Obviously, the middle school debate was something that was kind of hot button issue. And maybe we bring in some different perspectives on things like that and just different topics. So if you have any ideas, anything like that, obviously, all three of us are very accessible. Twitter, email, whatever. My stuff's all publicly available on, on social media. And I can be found. Danny knows everybody and, and, and disables the uh, – I, I don't know. Josh is a saint. Um, so, <laughs> uh, not that Danny Danny isn't. He's great too. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any suggestions, ideas, things you want to hear from us, let us know what you'd like to see different from the show other than Danny and I being off of it. Let us know what you want on the show um, and, and what changes you'd like to see going into next year. I mean, the feedback's all been awesome and we really appreciate it. And, and I mean, any way that we can make it better is awesome. Um, and I think that that's where I'll start my thank yous is just to everybody who's watched and listened and participated. I mean, the I told these guys when we first did this to maybe expect like what, like 50, 50 to 100, and we'll be in good shape. And we've done triple, quadruple all my expectations, which has just been phenomenal. It's a testament to the growth of the sport, Danny's pull, um, and Josh's good looks. And it's just, I mean, it's been incredible. Um, it, it really has genuinely, in all seriousness, it's been incredible the support for the show. Um, going out and, and hearing from people, hearing stories from Danny and hearing stories from Josh, we're strange to come up and telling them um, how much they like the show is, is really cool. Um, yeah. Josh. And thank you to Hank. Like, I, I don't think people understand, like, and I, I've said this to Hank multiple times, like he's the hardest working uh, man in, uh, in, in show business. Like this, the, the, the amount of content that you put out in a day, whether it's softball, soccer, girls, basketball, and not just like, the, the the surface level stuff like stats and rankings but like how in depth you go uh, about uh, about the girls and their personal stories and their journeys uh is uh, is amazing i've never seen it i i've lived anywhere else I, i've lived uh, you know a bunch of different places and i've never seen someone like just care so much and put out so much good uh you know information in in stories about uh high school girls athletics so a tip of the cap uh to you sir I should have went before you, Josh, because that's exactly what I was going to say. I, Hank, I just wanted to thank you. Um, you know, I, I guess the show needed a producer and somebody to pull all the strings. I mean, you just said this this thing in front of me, and I could probably go for a while. But um, but at the same time, it would be a terrible show that nobody would watch or listen to. So um, I think the fact that you gave us the content and, and I saw, I think what I would tell the audience is this. I, I just I, – this season, I got a behind-the-scenes look um, – at really how hard he works. And so um, if you guys see him, you know, on the softball field, go up and thank him, please. Um, he, he really does work really hard and, um, and uh, wasn't scared to step out of the box and do something a little bit different. And, um, you know, I just wanted to tell this quick story. Uh, I don't know if I've told it on the air yet, but I'll tell it now. The very first time the three of us had did our first episode, which we were previewing the sneakers for Santa, um, we sat in a room in the Indi in in the Indy Star building downtown, um, and uh, I, I I think we just set an iPhone down in the center of the we table did. and just started talking. No notes, no microphones, no nothing. Um, I, I, and we just started talking, and and sixty eight minutes later, we had an episode, and it got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of views. Um, I walked into the gym later that week. And I couldn't, I couldn't move 10 feet without somebody, you know, saying something about what we did in that first episode. So I think at that point in time, I kind of knew I was like, well, you know, maybe there is some, some legs to this and, and maybe there, maybe people actually will listen. Um, and then what ensued in the next three or four months just completely exceeded my expectations. So I just wanted to sincerely, um, thank the audience and, um, and, I think I've always said that people always can just say they support girls basketball. Um, it's just such an easy thing to say. Um, but do you actually do it? And I think one of the things that, that, that I think our niche audience kind of showed is that, that we care and, um, and that we, we do want to support these girls and do want to support girls basketball. So, 
Um, I've had a blast the last three or four months, and I just wanted to thank Hank, uh, you on the air, and 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 thank Sabe and Courtney not on the air right now. Um, thank them for just allowing us to just get on here and do something that we would probably be doing anyways. Is just sitting here talking about girls basketball, and I think these girls deserve it. Um, I can't wait for season two, um, yeah. if this is the season one finale. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, and oh. Hank, I'll, uh, I'll I'll let you kind of punctuate it and and um, put a punctuation on the season. I think I've talked about it before, but this actually started. This was saves in my idea right around the time that you retired. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to do something with you, and we just taught girls basketball. And then I got busy, and it just kind of fell away. And then Danny texted me kind of out of nowhere because I didn't really know Danny before this show. Like we we I, Danny, I remember the one time that we actually talked and interacted. It was after. It was at Lawrence North, I think. I I thought it was at the mill, maybe. Maybe it was. I don't remember. I guess I don't actually remember. Wow, this is a terrible story. <laughs> Any hoodles. Uh, we just BS, and that was cool. And then you yelled at me. I remember seeing you at state softball. I was up in the press box, and you were down there, you know, with everybody else. Um, and you were standing there. I guess you were yelling at me for like 20 minutes before I finally looked down <laughs> and spotted you down there. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, Danny contacted me out of nowhere. He's just like, hey, man what do you think about doing this uh, a girls basketball podcast? And I was like, tell yeah, I got, sounds great. Let's get save one on this. Cause I didn't want to leave. Cause I didn't want to look like a jerk, you know, leaving Josh out. And obviously. Well, I appreciate that. <clears throat> yeah, no, Sorry. That sounded horrible. Um, but obviously I expect the hell out of Josh. I got to know Josh and, and spend time with him covering girls basketball during the season that we overlapped. And that was awesome. And I, I forget where I was going with this, but working with you two and working with Courtney has just been so much fun and I've told you guys this directly, but I am just so much smarter about the game of basketball, listening to you guys talk shop, being amongst yourselves in the group chat or even with other coaches. And, and we should shout them out, too, for the people who have taken time out of their day to join us on this show. I mean, they don't have to do that. These coaches have so much other stuff going on and, and work and families do. And to take time to talk with us on this show really means a lot. And I think it adds a lot of credibility. But, um, yeah, listening to you two, Danny, your reach and your passion for the game is unreal. You're just such a good guy. Um, Josh, you two, obviously, I mean, it's, it was a blast covering your teams. It's been even more fun getting to know you. I mean, gosh, we spent, you spent an hour talking with me on my drive back from LaPorte and you're driving back from Michigan. That's a core memory. Danny, I talked earlier about, uh, some of the shows and that's, that's by the way, one of my favorite things about Danny is that no matter what I need, I'm like, Hey guys, who wants to do a show? Danny's usually the one he's like, yeah, man, let's, let's, uh, let's freaking do it. Let's go. Um, the Zionsville show being a perfect example where I'm just sitting there and I, an idea spur of the moment. And Danny's the perfect enabler and, and add some, some light, some intelligence and some really good insight to it. And um, I think I speak for all three of us and all four of us in that my knowledge of the state of Indiana basketball, like that's my goal is to kind of grow this into kind of a statewide beat with the focus on central Indiana, but still have knowledge and tell good stories from around the state and, and doing this show has allowed me to branch out the way that I want to. We're talking about, um, Borden and Vinesville schools way down south, and we're going all the way up north and talking about schools in the corners too. Um, and that's been really cool, and it's been really fun too. As I as I stumble my way home on this, it's been really cool too. Just the reach that we have, where people at Lake Central are pissed off at the three people who picked against them in semi state. That was pretty amazing. Um, so just things like that. It's been really cool. Like Danny said, um, it means a lot to people listened. Um, it's been a blast working with you guys. Uh, nobody else that I'd rather be doing this with you two and Courtney. Um, it's been a lot of fun and gosh, I am just so fired up to continue doing this through the summer and to start this up again next season. I got Marty. I've had ideas ping pong around my head during some of these long road trips of how does season two, how do we start this? Cause I mean, we started this a week in a mm-hmm. month into the season last you know, year. Yeah, I was October. <laughs> yeah. Or November, or how, maybe our, uh, how our preview show is going to look. So no, it's great. It's awesome. I've rambled too much. I've gone on for too long, but thank you all sincerely so much for watching. We all really appreciate it. Um, subscribe on YouTube. Um, yeah, we'll be back in uh, whenever All Stars is. I think it's June, late May, June, somewhere in there. It's around the same time as State Softball. Either way, um, we'll have a show then. <clears throat> we'll have some stuff over the summer then to, to tie us through and to keep the algorithm going. Um, but in the meantime, be sure to subscribe to the Star, subscribe on YouTube. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you again in a few uh, few months.